who look who we have here. Yo. Oh God, that's gross. So right now, everybody, he's fairly good people. And what up, from Antelope? We're in the same area. He's fairly good people. He's got a pretty good mind, but he's got a few flaws, like I was saying. Uh, fuck, I'll let him say it himself, man. I don't have any flaws, motherfucker. No, what are you talking about? Man. I'm having a hard time hearing you on the TikTok, though. And he is connecting. Hey, speak up. Yo, yo, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, you're kind of low, though. And thanks, Trav. Appreciate that. What's up, Sabs? Welcome in, actually. Sabs. Moderator. How about now? Uh, still pretty low, but I mean, that's what it is. That might be me. Yeah, let me put the headphones in real quick and see if that makes a difference. I'll just suck it up. Stop being a little biz edge. All right, say something. Yo, what's up, motherfucker? God damn, that voice annoys me. You know what annoys me? What? What's up, Chris? People hating on the Jaguars. Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah. It's our time. So that's what I was going to say. One of your sicknesses is you're a fucking Jags fan. Like, legit. I it's am. a problem, it is dude. A, I mean, it's power to be real. the problem. All right, and so before we uh, dive into your little sickness here, so everyone, this is Resist for Humanity. Uh, he's a good buddy of mine. Uh, he's got a great page. Go check him out. Uh, we're working on some other things right now. Um, I'll let him kind of give a little quick spiel about himself, and then we'll probably bullshit for a few seconds, and then we'll dive into the real shit. So. All right. I'll give the, you know, what's up, everybody? Uh, man, fucking Matt's the man, first off. I've been following him for a long time. Uh, so I'm, first time, first video I saw, I was like, yeah, this dude's a real motherfucker. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just been, uh, I got in, I was disengaged from politics, got re-engaged, uh, back in the Andrew Yoon campaign. And, uh, the more engaged I got, the more shit I saw and the more fucked up shit I saw. And it pisses me off. And I got some fucking teenagers that are, uh, entering the world and, I'm not real happy about the shit that we're doing. So I said, uh, no, I'm not going to stand by and let that shit uh, fly anymore. So so now they got to deal with me. I'm just going to make myself an annoyance to every politician and, and fucking person doing bad shit out there in our society until they fucking really wisen up, which it looks like it's going to be a fucking lifelong struggle because there's a lot of fucking bad shit out there. So. Yeah, we're going to be at this for a while, no doubt about it. Um, with that said, let's start with your Trevor Lawrence pick, though, real quick. Uh, I Trevor laid off Lawrence, you. yeah. I laid off you for a few days because whatever, you're all happy about this shit. Your new draft pick, new fucking future, put the past behind you. But uh, I don't really see shit reversing for you guys. Trevor Lawrence is the, he's the best draft uh, prospect to come out of college football ever. He's oh, fucking hell. Ever. <laughs> ever. That's cute. I'll let you have that one. But uh, let's dive into it. So, first thing I wanted to bring up was I tried to drop a video a few hours ago on uh, this Newsmax, uh, Newsmax retraction. Obviously, you guys know that Newsmax is one of the big old propaganda outlets for Donald Trump. And go fucking figure, that one's held for review. And uh, the retraction was actually about Dominion voting systems, and they fucking fully acknowledged that there was bullshit. Um, because, you know, the defamation lawsuits were coming in and all that jazz. They admit that, uh, you know, audits were all good to go. Elections all good to go. Did you really, Cindy? Uh, I got one of my followers that said she worked for uh, Dominion. Uh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Um, but, yeah, so thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I think Newsmax, uh, they, they basically admitted to being part of a uh, bullshit. Um, and of course, MAGA will ignore it. They, won't they will the ignore it. They, it, it doesn't matter. That's kind of, 
that's the thing. I was going to say, like, if they see that retraction, like, does that even change anyone's mind on their end? No, no, they, no. We, we could confront Robert with it, but he, uh, he bailed out on my, my phone tonight, so. Uh, Go I, figure. I He's uh, talking but... about uh, one of his MAGA buddies who's uh, supposed to jump in and talk, I think, about COVID, masks and all that jazz, uh, but somehow keeps fucking disappearing when it's time to come with the receipts. Go fucking figure. Um, shocking. Exactly. And then, yeah, Carnage, Fox, and Owen as well drop some shit. Um, drop some retractions. Because the defamation lawsuits were fucking huge. You're talking like billions of dollars. So. Yeah, the well, lawsuits work in this case. Um, they haven't worked in the past against Tucker Carlson. Uh, when uh, he was sued, he, he pled that he was, uh, or claimed that he was not news, he was entertainment. And that didn't matter to the MAGA. And it won't matter to them now either. They're. They're in a cult of personality. It's beyond hope for most of them. So if MAGA can't be persuaded, then who we actually have to be targeting with our message? So we actually have to target the, the other hats. I think I, for a while I was focused on how do we rapidly evolve the thinking of 70 million Americans? And the answer is we don't. Uh, not at least the, the bottom half. The, I would say the bottom half because I'm an Aryan, uh, or, I guess. But I was I was convinced how do we I was convinced we had to evolve their thinking but we're not going to um, that's the fact of the matter the what we can do is we can evolve the thinking of the other 70 million that are on the side of moving community forward and there's a lot of non-action and a lot of people are feeling like they did their due diligence they they served their um, uh, country and their job is done after voting November 3rd and that is not the case that's not no. the case we need them engaged now uh, this is the time that the people go to sleep and the lobbyists are still active and working and in Biden's mm -hmm. ear every day well you brought up a hell of a good point for example man like uh, was I think it was a TED talk you showed me where um yeah, he showed me a TED talk where um, pretty much the advice was right to unplug almost, essentially, right? Unplug, kind of get out of these fucking pathways of information, social media, all that jazz. And it's like, that's the completely fucking wrong message, like 100% fucking wrong. If anything, those are the pathways which we can actually change shit, right? We have a way fucking... So that's the thing, like, people never want to fucking recognize, like, what's going on here in the timeline of human history. Like, information travels at a way fucking speed, like, faster speed than ever before, right? So we can communicate at faster speeds, we can move ideas faster than ever, we can collectivize faster than ever, we can mobilize faster than ever, if we use it towards that end, right? But of course, like anything, it's a tool, depending on how we utilize it. Um, and too many people are fucking That's checking correct. out, and too many people are using it for bullshit, so. Yeah, no, the, the smartest and brightest, uh, most productive members of society have determined that social media is at best a troll farm and at worst psychological manipulation. And... So they've been advocating for uh, unplugging from social media, which leaves us in a fucked up position because that means that all of the, you know, yahoos are running the show, and there's no there's no counterpoint. There's no there's no um, um, strong uh, arguments on the other side. A voice of reason is has left the room. So we need all of these smart people that realize how fucked up social media is to re-engage and become influencers themselves and and um that's that's where the 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 battle is it, you've stated this many times uh, you know uh fake news travels at uh you know at, at twice the speed as uh as facts um that's the, that's the reality of the world we're living in and studies show that the first information the first exposure someone has to a fact is uh 75 percent of the time gonna be how they view that position moving forward no matter what evidence they're presented with so and yeah, to that point so here's the fucking here's the fucking really scary thing about that so he just said right when you when you come across information data facts something like that boom for the most part that's gonna stick that's gonna be a foundational block that's gonna be what you're gonna believe and going forward, whatever you fucking learn is going to be interpreted with like, interpreted with that in mind already, right? So you're kind of building like mental pathways upon mental pathways, right? You take information, you kind of build upon it, build upon it, build upon it, and you kind of just build a bigger, bigger view of something, right? So to that end, if we as a society are taking information, we're not even reading headlines anymore, right? 
it's literally just fucking quick little headlines, right? And we're not checking out the articles, and it's little snapshots which don't even match up with the actual information contained, right? And these are the building blocks of how we think, for the most part, a lot of us, right? And so here's a yeah. scary stat. On Facebook, 70% of people who share the fucking article don't read their own article. So how many people who are just scrolling by that and clicking on it or just fucking commenting aren't reading the fucking article? Because if the person who felt compelled to share it couldn't be fucking bothered to read it, how about the rest of the people? Yeah. And that's how that's we share true. information. It's yeah. fucked up, dude. Correct. <laughs> it is. Um, and, you know, the, the thing is, is that I think... I think that... It, also memes in general like it's not even just articles like news articles it's memes like people are influenced by memes much more than uh they would like to realize um it's just casual drive-by impressions that people get uh, that are influencing their perceptions of the world even if they disagree with the notion that's being put forward it's now on their radar it's now part of their fucking psyche they've been exposed to it so mm -hmm. Let me pause real quick. You gonna jump on Twitch or YouTube? Yeah, I just hit the uh, go live there. Just a second. All right, dope, dope. Cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, Shadow's asking. Good call on her part. Um, but yeah, it's kind of it gets back to like, I don't know. That's why I kind of want to start. As you know, like we talk about this shit. That's why I think media to me is the ground zero of all this, right? Because to me, media is kind of where the information flows starts. It should be the check on government. It should be how we inform ourselves. Um, and we got to kind but of retake that shit. Anymore. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that's been thrown out the window a long time ago. Um, uh, what was that book by uh, Chomsky? Um, oh, I'm not going to get it. I forget the name. But anyways, uh, yeah, media has been bought out because the corporate oligarchs that control society and industry, they control the media too. So they bought out all the major news outlets. They bought out all the local radio stations. They bought out all the journals. They everything is um the messaging in this country is controlled top down and mm -hmm. so we have to get the intelligent people that have checked out the social media back engaged and build our network create our space well to that end so this is a little more like kind of you know uh, i'll just i'll fucking say it, myopic and within like the big picture that i think we want to get to but I was talking to Steel Walker, that dude I had a debate with or a discussion. Honestly, it wasn't a debate, so I was pretty chill with him. Yeah, manufacturing consent, boom. Um, originally, is a good got it. Manufacturing consent would be the term, and probably the book you're looking for. But it also touches on some of the shit sure. from Edward Bernays. Um, so originally, uh, originally, you'd probably know about Edward Bernays and some of his work then. Um, but to get back to that, because to that point, dude, conservatives, Republicans, the MAGA crowd, they're so goddamn good at rallying around, like, um, they, they use social media way better than the left, in my opinion. Like, way fucking better. To that, so you're talking about memes, for example, right? Bro, like, their memes, like, it, it's just, they meme better. Um, I know that's kind of a meme in of itself. It's not like the left can't meme. But, uh, they, yeah, they I utilize mean, they, social the media The left better. doesn't have a, a meme game, really. Like, they tried to get to one going this last election a little bit, but they're so far behind the eight bar fall on this. It's ridiculous. Um, I, I, I was, I was shocked when I started you know, it took me a while to get behind Biden, but I, when I got behind Biden and said, okay, let's let's try to move the needle here, I, I couldn't find any groups. I couldn't find anyone on Facebook or in the mm -hmm. Democratic groups I was in. I would try to bring these ideas to them, like, hey, we need to coordinate about message boosting and things like that. And it was met with silence. Like, they don't, mm -hmm. a lot of the left disengages. Like, they disengage from Facebook because the MAGA is so intolerable that they just were like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. Well, guess what? Uh, you're dealing with it like you, it's not an one issue. way or another one way or another you can confront it so, or you can fucking submit to it and bitch about losing elections and fucking you know and to kiss your thing 2022 we were talking about this uh last night dude i um i have a bad feeling <laughs> i know they're gonna i yeah they're i think that the democrats are gonna lose the house um just from the from nothing else other than the the number of seats that have changed to red states in the house um because of the latest census um mm -hmm. it's and they there's this myth on the left that the republicans are in disarray and they're not 
they've circled the wagons. They've decided what they're doing. They're going. They're full feet. I think crazy. you might be right about that. I think this is what people don't fully get. Now, I'm not going to like say that I, because a big part of me thinks that the GOP is dead. Right? There's a big part of me that thinks that, but there's also a part of me that realizes that Trumpism is not gone. Just because Donald Trump might be done as a player, and that's not a for sure, his movements here and alive, he fucking awoke in something that had been, for I'd say about four decades, hidden. Hidden by colorblind America, that whole fake bullshit. So, yeah. No, they, well, this is a movement that the GOP has built. They've built this over decades. So this isn't, um, like, it really isn't the Trump movement. Like, Trump just uh, galvanized it in a way that a uh, few of the Republican candidates at the time had the uh, ability to do because they were they were insiders, and he ran as an outsider. And so he was able to solidify that. But the distrust of the government, the belief that government's not doesn't have any answers, the belief that everyone's crooks and corrupt, like all that shit's been seeded for fucking years now. And uh, my belief is that it's, it's largely, uh, it's been planned. It, they've been working on this because they knew that the numbers showed that over time that the um, white Christian evangelical sort of group that's been in charge of things uh, they're they're quickly becoming the minority and mm -hmm. so they've been setting up a system of how to rule by uh you know minority rule minority and, rule 100 yeah, percent. yep and that's what we're seeing and if the democrats are successful in thwarting the um, voter suppression efforts at the state level and at the federal level by passing maybe hr1 they will resort to fucking violence I don't get it twisted because they already showed you what they're going to do. They've already done it once. They that's that's what they'll do again. So yeah, that's that's what kind of blows my fucking mind right there. It's like, hold on a second. I, I don't think I don't even think the left fully understands the significance of what happened on January 6th, honestly. It's like, do you do you guys understand that the motherfucking peaceful transition of power our capital at the time of the confirmation of our election, was fucking attacked. Literally. Like, that's like, that's like fucking all, any of our enemies ever. That's their fucking wet dream. And you're supposed to tell me that a fucking rabble of dumb dumb MAGA sheep got in there on their own? Well, I'm not drinking know, that fucking Kool-Aid. We know firsthand that they had buses and buses. They had like 70 buses that were um, chartered. Uh, some some of them funded by Let Clarence Let me pause Thomas you real quick. Wyatt. Everyone go follow Bukowski1356. Bukowski, comment so they can see your uh, page, my dude. Also, Shy and Shy, if you can comment um, so I can highlight you. But uh, go ahead, my dude. Yeah, hey, no, Bukowski, it's um, definitely... Yeah, Clarence Thomas' wife funded buses to come to the fucking uh, Capitol riots on the 6th. It's, it's absurd. And so we we just let that, like, go by. I, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I my hope is that the FBI is still investigating this and they're just trying to do a really thorough job. There's some evidence of that because they did just raid Giuliani's home. So maybe, the, maybe this is just a very methodical approach they're taking. But, man. His uh, son's thinking of running now, right? Yeah, it's, they're, they're all still in the in players in this. Um, the, the Republican Party is is full Trump, MAGA, QAnon crazy still mm. to this day. Like, they tried. I think Mitch McConnell tried to cut out the cancer right after um, the 6th, and he went and, and threw Trump under the bus on that uh, speech he gave, and the reaction was... Uh, not positive for their party. They realize that their voting base is, that's who their voting base is. And so they have yeah. no choice. They have to ride with this. 100%. Well, I mean, like, we saw the uh, dip in popularity for, like, a McConnell or anyone who went against the uh, election shit, who went against the uh, insurrection shit, who went against Trump in any way, right? Their numbers plummet. Yep. Um, so, well, and that's the thing, too. Yep. You got... About 50% of Republicans who are entrenched Donald Trump supporters, that's not going to change. Like, the other 50% are the problem because half of them are like, they don't know what to do. The other half of them, which is about a fourth, they are not MAGA types, right? So the reality is we have to get that fourth and we got to bring them over. Um, we got to get them to be like, yo, I don't, I don't give a shit about your beliefs right now. Like, we need, a, we need everyone together on this as much as possible. 
I'd like to think we could get the MAGA crew on board because to your point, you guys have talked about because some of his background is he worked with the Yang campaign and stuff like that. And he's a really big advocate at UBI, which is something I'm a big uh, advocate for. Um, and they found, and I'm speaking for him kind of here, but from talking to him, they found that Trumpers um, kind of bought into UBI actually more than even some people on the left oftentimes, interestingly enough. Um, so I think there's ways that you can kind of, because there's these buzzwords that just kill conversations, right? And if you can avoid and bypass those buzzwords and just kind of talk about the ideas and kind of put it at like a, the human level, right? You can kind of get them to uh, move past that on some of these things, but. Yeah, yeah, the, a big part, the biggest part of getting Trump, you know, or Republic, I, I don't want to say Trumpers anymore because, you know, honestly, the, the Trumpers are the Trumpers, but there's still maybe some Republicans out there that just their distaste for the Democratic Party is so great that they'll they'll tolerate um, whatever the Republicans throw up. Those are the ones that maybe you can pick off. Um, and you got to do it by being honest about the the faults within the Democratic Party when you talk to these people. Don't like because if you're going to be real, the Democratic Party kind of has a lot of problems. Like. They, they kind of suck too. The DNC so, blows. I'm on record saying the DNC might be a bigger problem than GOP. Yeah, I uh, I don't know if they're a bigger problem because what I see out of the Repub RNC is like just insanity. But uh, they're definitely not part of the solution uh, a lot of the times and actively working against the solution sometimes. So they Pebbles need to be addressed. Music queen. Um, I want to address this one real quick. What is the difference between Trump and Biden? Um, that's an interesting question because I find it hard that that's asked in good faith at this point in time with so much relevant data and so much relevant evidence and so many examples of their behavior and policy and what they value and what they embolden. Um, it seems like an interesting question. So Pebbles McQueen, uh, Pebbles, Pebbles Music Queen, go ahead and expand on that a little bit more, because I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt here, but expand on that a tad bit more for me before I uh, jump into can that. I, can I answer that? Cause I, I yeah, yeah, I got... go ahead. <laughs> and what's the difference between Trump and Biden? What the, you've been paying any attention? Like, first off, the uh, belief in science, like trust in like the, the science and, and evidence and data, like, Trump doesn't understand the difference between a germ, a bacteria, a virus. Like that's uh, he didn't promote mask usage. Like not even things that would like harm the. Econ These are things that would help the economy stay open. He refused to adopt because of pride or ego. I don't know. Um, you know, it, 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 Trump passed a uh, COVID stimulus bill that went largely to the billionaires of this country, like the PPP loans, like the vast majority of that funding went to the fucking uh, the top, uh, the largest corporations, the wealthiest among us. And, uh, yo, what's up, Angry Uncle? <laughs> um, and uh, Biden's uh, COVID relief bill, the, the vast majority went to actually helping people. Like, I don't mm -hmm. think, it, I didn't see a lot, it, many uh, really large payouts to corporations or, or the wealthy. It was a stimulus plan that went money to healthy people. So, um, how about that? Yeah, and uh, plus, like Connor's pointed out, uh, one's a fascist, so there's that. Yeah, one's a lying fascist that was totally okay. We can argue it goes, about it, the, it, it's the it, right it goes, term actually, or not. You, you know what? Actually, hold on a, a second. Genocide. Yeah, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Fuck the fucking good faith. That's a bullshit question because we just fucking talked about insurrection and shit. So you know what? Get the fuck out. Uh, fucking, where's this comment? He made up uh, a lie about the fucking election. That can't, that can't like, be. That can't be a good faith. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, that's bullshit. I'll try to play the nice card, but fuck that word. That's some bullshit. Biden, We're talking about. Yeah, dude. And Biden fucking sucks, by the way. All right, he's a fucking lifelong moderate fucking democrat which is essentially a motherfucking republican all right but like that's levels above a fucking fascist so yeah I, I, i'm I, i'm i'm fuck trump and fuck biden too but you know biden surprised me i think he's done better than i anticipated so far uh yeah so you know i'm not cool with what still, they're doing with the border like, I'm not cool. fuck biden though yeah he's got a lot of problems he, he you know and that i would the vaccine rollout against. Um, so what they've been doing the vaccine roll like dude dramatically fucking better um, just the messaging better. on COVID dramatically fucking better 
Um, to your point, child tax credit. Bro, where the fuck child that tax from? credit is a big one. That's that's huge. That's money, and it, it's uh, the studies that are out on it say that it will eliminate or or cut child poverty in half. Now, me. I argue, why not fucking end child poverty? Like, how do you decide which, how, you know, what kid out of the two is going to get uh, lifted out of poverty, which has to be stuck there? But outside of that, I'm not going to turn a, a blind eye to um, um, the uh, uh, the reality that it's going to help improve, you know, millions of kids' lives. That's that's great. So, yeah, hundred percent. Um, some brought up like uh, lead pipes. His commentary on the trans community, for example, for a president that's fucking huge. Um, like that was actually like a hell of a cool moment. Words matter. Me. Like even mm-hmm. the Democrats get accused a lot of being empty with en- empty rhetoric of uh, virtue signaling and stuff. But if if you believe that um, words matter, especially when they come from the highest office of the land, even if it's just empty rhetoric, it's it makes a difference because instead of cat, you know, putting out there and projecting that everyone that every immigrant is a rapist, drug dealing, like criminal, like there's some of the rhetoric you heard from Trump, um, you, you know, like that's, that stuff changes people's minds. It changes, it, it influences their behavior and their perceptions. And so, yeah, even empty rhetoric that's positive has a difference. So, but but I don't want to be sitting here defending Biden. We need to be holding Biden's buck into task. And, and it goes back to the whole point. The DNC is the bigger problem, but you don't seem to agree with that. Because here's the thing. Here's the logic. The RNC is the fucking RNC. They're like, literally, that's the opposing fucking political tribe that's supposed to be the representation of those who are less open to change, right? And we're the people who are on the opposite side of that personality scale, right? We're more open to change. We're more progressive, right? And the DNC is supposed to represent us. We know that's all bullshit, but... The side that's supposed to represent us, right, the political, political machine that's supposed to represent us, can't fucking beat Donald Trump? Really? No, I, I'm going to list the fucking numbers out. We've won seven of the last eight popular votes. We enjoy 20 plus million more representation within Congress when you look at their constituents, right? 70% of GDP comes from fucking blue counties, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We know what red states are fucking doing. And we can't win fucking elections because the DNC cares more about their own fucking power and maintaining the status quo than winning elections against Republicans, which means they're the bigger fucking problem because they're how we win. Yeah. We can't change the GOP. Um, yeah, that's, um, I mean, it's not, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push back too hard on that because there's a lot of good points there. Um, that's bullshit. Shout out to uh, um, uh, Kitty who says, free community college, Across to everyone, I agree with that, hundred percent. Um, oh, we got my boy Barrister in here. Um, Barrister's in here. Everyone, go follow Barrister. Go follow Cheyenne for UBI. Go follow Bukowski for thirteen fifty six. Go follow. Actually, everyone, go follow everyone in here, man, because that's actually that's kind of something that we fucking suck about on the left. The conservatives, they follow everybody. They boost everybody. They support everybody. They are so fucking in on that shit. If one of their fucking accounts goes down, I swear to God, the next day it's like the same follower account. It's like what the fuck you're back? What? And it's, they're on top of that shit. They're boosting their message. They're utilizing social media to make a fucking presence felt. And that shit fucking matters. Like, so many people on the left are disengaged. They don't utilize this shit. But yeah, go follow all of them. Yeah, they had... I think my boy, yeah, I think my boy Frazier's in here, too. What up, Frazier? So. Yeah, you gotta go follow Nell Neves, follow District 12 Kitty. Um, you know, those are some, uh, those are some good people that, that you should follow as well. But... But yeah, the left definitely does not do a good job of organizing like the like the right does um, online, and we need to get better at that. It starts with following people, like follow motherfuckers and like their stuff, engage with their content, even if you're not a content creator yourself. Like every single like, every single share, every single comment, all of that helps like push the message. So if you're engaged and you like what you're hearing from from people, um, give it a like interact with it in some Shit, way man. Because... just share it to your friends even if you don't feel comfortable interacting within tiktok just share it with your personal bubble even right you can always you because that's the biggest thing man you might be an influencer within your own personal bubble right maybe you're not going to jump on and talk you don't all feel comfortable doing that i know i don't always feel comfortable doing that right 
Um, but everyone has to fucking have some kind of role. Everyone has a role to play. And if it's just helping push content, that's a big fucking thing. Because no more, so like, dude, your best, your favorite content creator could have the most brilliant fucking shit. But if you're not there to push their content to other people, it's not going to be seen. So like, you're just as important. Like, literally, you really are. Like, yeah, that's, but you gotta do that's your part. true. I got to say, like, what up to my guy that I can't pronounce his username, Tanukin, <laughs> Tanukin, not to uh, dude, I'm sorry, I butchered it. I've never, I, I can't pronounce it. Bukowski, that should be um, one of your next uh, videos, um, by the way. I think I got it. But, um, yeah, everyone that, um, you know, social media gets everyone a microphone, but a microphone without an audience ain't shit. So that's why you got to follow. If you got someone that's, I love promoting small, like, people just starting out. They Like, I, if I see someone make a good video and they've got, like, six followers or something like that they're new i try to boost that especially because that's like that's someone that's got something to say they need it they're trying to get it out there and they need help and uh yeah elevate those people yeah mansion is in a tough spot barrister no doubt about it but the people but you know how it is right with shit so polarized on the national level no one's gonna give a shit about the nuance of his uh you know the oh, pressure mansion. in his locale yeah they're talking about oh uh, trump wouldn't see that's the comments. thing is trump wouldn't tolerate that shit from anyone in his party like like trump would use the the white house as the bully pul uh pulpit and 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 force them to get behind uh his legislation and he he fucking primaried his own party he would he and biden's not that guy he's not gonna do that and i get mm -hmm. it but you know it's gonna end up with them losing the house is what's going to happen well dude so. because that's the thing it just goes back to the left eats their own the right gets in line like dude we fucking yeah I, I can't it's crazy and I, i'm going to say this right now if you're if you're a progressive and you're out here arguing and with me about ubi or whatever and like shit talking that's like stop it Y'all need to grow the fuck up because I support every progressive policy. I got my preference. You can have your preference, but I'm not going to step in the way of a progressive policy getting forward, getting pushed forward. That's not going to happen. Um, so if $15 minimum wage can, comes up, I voted for that shit in Florida. We got that shit passed in the state of Florida. Um, if it's uh, Medicare for all, great. Let's go. Like I, I like any any policy that's going to help people, I'm for. And there's a lot on the left that um, if it's not their preferred policy, they will shit talk and trash the hell out of it. And mm -hmm. that shit doesn't help at all. Um, then, no, like the Andrew Yang fucking shit. Dude, how does Andrew Yang get so much goddamn fucking hate from the left? It blows my mind. It's like, it's that type of shit. It's like, it's like, we deserve this. We fucking deserve what's coming in, man. Like, like. Because that's a damn good candidate. That's that's exactly what you want, is it not? Data-driven, fucking gives a fuck about future generations, trying to fucking move capitalism towards at least a human-centric fucking, you know, measured, you know, endeavor, if that's even possible, with the reality of what capitalism yeah. is, promoting UBI, right? Understands what's coming with automation and all this shit, actually has a fucking grasp and understanding of the issues of the modern day. Nope. Fuck that that's guy. That's the one thing I don't... There's a lot on the hard left, like the you know straight up communists. They'll you know their comrades and and things like that that are accelerationist, and they believe that anything that is not burning down the system is uh, not worth pursuing because it just perpetuates capitalism. And I'm I just fundamentally disagree with that notion that um, tearing it down. Um, without a clearly articulated plan and vision for what that looks like, uh, what that process looks like and what comes after is not going to help. Uh, we saw with COVID, uh, people's, uh, people didn't, I thought at first when COVID hit that people would rally around UPI, they feel like we would come together. That's not what happened. People became more tribal. They became more um, antagonistic towards one another. And it's, the opposite of what we need. We need to lift up the, the entirety of humanity. Um, and financially, educational wise, we need a revolution of thought and thinking and compassion. And that's that's where the real revolution is. Because if we have to have a bloody revolution, man, that ain't going to be good for anyone. 
That's not good for any, yeah, exactly. That's not good for anyone. Would, that, what would happen there is I think you'd have like pockets of pretty fierce violence, right? I don't think it'd be like a national wide scale thing, but you'd have pockets of violence within states. Um, I fuck man, I really don't know be... what the fuck that would look like though, man. Jesus, like, I, but here's the thing. To your point, it's not what the world looks like anymore, right? We live in a data driven, information driven, uh, technologically driven society, so it'd be like some cyber warfare shit. But here's the thing: it's, it's a battle of fucking ideas, and it starts with social media. Like, literally, it starts with fucking social media because that's how information's moved today. Like, and oh, gotta yeah. get motherfuckers I, back I mean, engaged. It doesn't even matter so much what the Republicans or Democrats are. Let me say the Democrats, what they are able to accomplish in the next uh, uh, maybe year until the midterms come up, a uh, uh, year and a half, because. The social messaging is so strong on the right that they they literally are believing made up bullshit. Because mm -hmm. so they just repeat the same fucking five to ten lies on repeat. Like literally just fucking whoop, whoop. Oh, time for the 12 o'clock lie. 12 and 3. Like, it's like literally on fucking repeat. They they understand propaganda. But that's yeah. that's the issue I think we're kind of running into. It's like it goes back. I, I want to know that out further. Like what's truth versus progress or are they the same like you know what i'm saying yeah you keep asking this question and i've been trying to think about it it's tough because um you know truth is i'm a big believer in the fucking truth like that's what sets me off is i don't like bullshit i don't like falsehoods i don't like those false narratives but we live in an age of made-up realities like everything's con people are living in a state of delusion so how do you if you care about the outcome can you achieve that outcome and be fully truthful i don't know if you can not when one side's intentionally lying like i mean maybe you can i don't know that there's but i think it i think the outcome is more important at this point um but that's, that's not a to scary say you answer, want to by be the way. Hmm? That's that's the point, though. I mean, it goes back to like what if you're looking at like what drives a successful society. Like in the end, I don't. I'm not even sure the fucking system matters that much for the most part, as long as enough motherfuckers buy in and enough motherfuckers believe the same shit, which is a kind of troubling conclusion when if you really value things like free speech, right? You know, truth, objectivity, etc. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, that's I, think it, like, my, I, go ahead. I think you could have a successful capitalistic uh, based economy. You could have a successful um, socialist based economy if you have, you know, good people in charge that knew how and when to um, moderate those, um, you know, policies and not be not be ideo ideologues. And it um, because in reality, capitalism by itself is fucking evil. Like, if you just look at the definition of it and what it stands for, it, there's nothing about humanity in it. And every excuse I hear from anyone that supports capitalism as well, it's you, you have to account for this and you have to account for that. But all of those things are things that are taking, going away from capitalism, the true essence of, like, pure capitalism. So that's the point, is pure capitalism is... is it would grind all of us into the fucking dirt if it meant that the um, owners of the this uh, the, the system could make another buck. Um, well, that's the point. If you want capitalism to like work in any fucking capacity, you have to have strong government, you have to have strong regulations, and you have to have an informed citizenry. And to that point, you have to have motherfucking unions because, like, like you just have to fucking have unions because that's how you actually like. So here's the thing. What are your what are your safety nets in a more socialistic framework? Typically, it comes from the government, right? If you really yeah. buy into capitalism, right, free market, all this jazz, the safety nets actually have to come from the employer then, which is why unions yeah. have to actually be able to fucking negotiate that shit. Correct. But if they're not there to fucking negotiate that shit, and you don't have the government providing a fucking safety net, well, you're on your own, motherfucker. Bootstrap that shit, boy. So. Yeah, and here's the problem, is if you look at the advancements that humanity has made in our standard of living over the last uh, century, it's largely responsible for uh, uh, due to organized labor. The ability for workers to organize and 
uh, go on strike and demand better wages, better work conditions, better living conditions. And the problem that we face is we're in the middle of the fourth industrial revolution. Automation, technology, robotics are rapidly accelerating and rendering entire industries obsolete. Um, Uber driving, truck drivers, um, you know, all the way up, even programming is becoming more click button. And my, my visual studio uh, development environment completes my lines of code for me. It rewrites entire chunks of like blocks of code and says, oh, you wrote that really shittily. Here's a much better way of writing software, writing this code. And I go, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's better than me. So it's going to impact every field, every industry, and, and the value of human labor is falling off of a cliff as a result. And when that happens, what does that mean for the primary means that we've used for improving our work conditions, organized labor? It means that it's less effective. It means that we're rapidly losing the only tool that we've had that has improved our lives. So we don't have a lot of time to act on this. And I worry that with the economy reopening and, you know, here in the U.S. at least, our virus numbers are doing rel relatively okay. Um, if um, we reopen and, and things, you get that GDP number up above 5% or, or whatever, um, people are going to fall back asleep and they're not going to, there, there's going to, there's going to be two diverging uh, groups. The group of people that are doing well and they're going to do great and be living a fantastic life uh, better than they had before the pandemic. And then there's going to be an increasing number of people that are left out, desolate. And we do a great job of ignoring motherfuckers uh, that are in a bad shape in this country. We will walk past the starving man on the fucking street. You'll yeah, 100%. That's a, actually was like one of the fucking crazy things. So I was talking about that with someone like, something like, oh, like healthcare is not a right, which like I actually like, and people always freak out when I say this. So I'm like, yo, just fucking pause for a second, you little reactionary fucks. Healthcare is not a right. Nothing's really a right. Like I hate the whole right conversation because a right is simply a fucking construct of your society, essentially. Like, so yeah, if we don't think it's a fucking right, it's not a fucking right. Like if we think it's a right, it's a fucking right. So I just bypass that whole bullshit because technically you can't, let's just say hypothetically, no one wanted to be a fucking doctor. You can't force someone to be a fucking doctor and then offer that service. So yeah, sure, it's not a fucking right. But we know that's not the world we live in. We're in a fucking modern, civilized, technologically advanced, wealthy, productive system that probably should fucking provide that for its citizens if we believe in the whole life thing, right? Because uh, if you yeah, can provide well, it... Uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, okay? That's what our founding fathers envisioned for this country. Now, they did, Now they were idealistic. They weren't able to live up to that uh, ideal during their time. And to this day, we still haven't been able to live up to it. But there is nothing more patriotic and American in spirit than progressive policies. Because in a modern country, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, that's fucking progressive policies. you got to ensure people have the uh, ability to um, live, which is health care. you got to ensure that they have the basic means of uh, obtaining the, the, the things required to exist, as in some shelter, some fucking food, some clothing. Like, uh, we should take abject poverty off the table for everyone in society period like without because it costs us more fucking money anyways it's fucking That's crazy right. it's literally so backwards yeah we, i mean I, I would assume most people in here probably understand the whole idea right it costs a lot less to p prevent people from falling into poverty than to raise them back out of it and plus with the automation Fed, coming the in Fed's done reports on this like for every dollar you invest in child poverty you save six dollars in the long run like that's uh where else are you going to get a return on investment like that um <laughs> but the greed is so strong that uh these assholes that are in charge will they, they'll take the dollar today in lieu of you know six dollars tomorrow so that's what someone said uh, the, the, the trolley problem it's not it's no longer one life for five lives it's still five lives for that fucking bag of cash and you know which one's gonna get the pool in good old american society today that's the thing, dude. Like, yeah. it's all—it it can be disheartening at times, right? Just how disengaged you are. Because again, it goes back to the whole point about healthcare, right? Because the right thing, again, because it goes back. I used to think like the right thing is not important, but to your point, 
I used to ask them like, oh, like if you see someone needs help on the side of the road, you're gonna stop to ask like their age, like where they're fucking from, like like what's your job status? Can I see your insurance card? No, you're gonna just help them. But I was like, you know what? Holy fuck, you might. And we live in a society where you might fucking do that. Or to your point, you might just fucking walk by. It's like crazy, dude. Like, yeah, like, we're 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 barbaric. We, That's the word for it. We are. We are barbaric. Um, we we treat your. Listen up, people. You uh, Americans in general. They, we treat our fucking family pets better than we treat the neighbor. When the neighbor, they get on hard times and maybe they're they're without work, without pay. They need to, um, you know, they need some help. Fuck them. Fuck them. They're lazy. They're stupid. They don't deserve it. That's the fucking American attitude. And yeah you, you know you don't do that to your family pet when your when your dog needs its heartworm pill you don't go you don't make it perform a bunch of uh tricks and run around the the living room uh before you before you give it its medicine you give it its fucking medicine because it's the right thing to do and we have an abundance of wealth in this country and we just refuse to use it to help people and invest yeah. in people look at how we treat our elderly look at how we treat our children and look at how we treat the homeless. One shouldn't fucking exist in our society, right? Like, there yeah. shouldn't be any homeless people in modern America. And the way we treat our kids, to the point, how many kids are in poverty? How many kids have uh, food insecurities, right? Um, I'm talking it's, tens of millions at this insane. point. It's insane. It's like, it, what, it, I don't know, 30%? It's something ridiculously high. Um, Dude, I think the Nordic countries, like, called us a, like, impoverished nation. <laughs> I was, like, yeah. reading, I was like, holy shit. We're, we're becoming those guys we are we we are an impoverished nation um i grew up in i grew up in poverty i grew up in a single stoplight i grew up 20 minutes outside of a single stoplight town and in a single wide trailer and and i got lucky i got out of there and i was able to expand my horizons but there's a lot of people the majority didn't and um, when i go back to visit it's not getting better in that small town it's getting worse. It's getting fucking worse. And it's getting worse in every small town across this country because capital flight is fleeing to the coasts, to the big cities, and it's leaving behind um, a bunch of non-opportunity for the people that remain. And I, until, unless something drastic changes, that's not changing. So... I mean, I think that's what we're going to be trying to do. Like, it sounds fucking, like, literally insane, right? Like, oh, so we just, like, listed out. So here's the thing. You got GOP. You got the Trumpers. You got the DNC. You got the progressives. Out of all those, just within the... You got the fucking apathetic moderates and all that jazz. So the progressives are pretty solid. The rest of them can get bent as far as I'm concerned, but we got to find a way to work with them. But then there's a the reality that they all support the empire which we're fighting, and the empire is fucking supported by the MIC, right, the military industrial complex. It's supported by yeah. big tech. It's supported by legacy media, right? It's supported by the corporations, which kind of occupy all the different industries and shit like that, right? And it's supported by the fucking other governments and shit who are all on this shit, right, who support the fucking corporations and whatnot, right? The whole post-World War II global structure of the economy and whatnot. Uh, you got the CCP. I know that there's, like, this whole movement on the left to kind of, like, be like, oh, like, America's so toxic, they're wrong on China. No, the CCP's a fucking problem. Like, don't get me wrong, we have no fucking leg to stand on in that conversation, but the CCP's a fucking problem. Uh, you got Russia. I got the Iranian regime I gotta worry about. And it's like, holy fuck, dude, there's like 30 fucking fronts that we're trying to fight. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> but, but at the same time, though, we have, we have done more to fuck over more countries on the planet than any of those combined. Like, we, we are the... We are the evil empire when it comes to destroying other countries. And it's not even just militarily, it's it, economically. We go in and we wreck them. We, mm -hmm. we there's, I saw a great interview with a former CIA operative, and his whole job was basically like going to, you know, dictators or rulers or whoever was in charge of uh, these small, some of these small Central American countries. And, providing them with fake reports and fake data that show that they needed GE to build some hydroelectric dam that would indebt them for fucking years and years and years. And, you know, that's so they would they would make the fake report and make the fake data and uh, show 
it to him, and that way GE could get that contract. And if mm-hmm. none of that shit worked, then you wind up with the military option, and you wind up with uh, the show of force taking place. And um, so, yeah, we've been. Then in... it's been like that the whole time. That's the thing. Like, uh, you look back at it, the what we were told as kids growing up, at least I was in Florida public education system about our, our founding. It was it was so glossed over and. I got to pause you real never... quick to address Bukowski. To be fair, China, yeah. that's a fair one. But Iran Bukowski, just because I am a half Iranian, that one is directly related to me personally. So that's why I take uh, the regime seriously. Don't get me wrong, if you look at the history of that, the U.S. has no credibility there. But the regime's fucking sick, my dude. They've killed 100,000 plus Iranians, 30,000 alone in 1988, 1,500 murdered just from 2019 on from protests, 12,000 plus jailed. Um, I can list this shit forever, what they're doing to us. They fucking withheld vaccines from the population, 200,000 plus dead, and a population of 80 million. Um, the Ayatollah's fucking off the charts evil. Um, so, no. But yeah. Hey, let's yeah. address our own genocide. Our own country killed us. Killed hundreds of thousands of us. Needlessly. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the one that, like, it, it, I get pushed back on a lot, and I don't care. I, it's, it, it is what it is, man. If he, Trump denied the science and denied all the evidence, denied all the medical experts' advice, denied the plan that had been put in, in place by two former administrations, one Republican, one Democrat, because that both agreed that handling a pandemic was a priority. He threw all that shit out for the stock market and for corporate profits, period. And mm-hmm. if you believe that, uh, he, even if you ignore that, he kept talking about the vaccines coming, right? So we got these vaccines coming. They're going to save people's lives. Well, how do you, how do you, what do you do then? You would delay and try to prevent people from tra- get, from in, becoming infected with the virus mm-hmm. until the vaccines get here. That's how you save but, lives. Can't but to that point, lives. you don't have to do that much either, man. Like, you literally just have yeah. to fucking kill travel. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Everyone's talking about, like, oh, it's, like, hard to, like, isolate. We're a fucking isolated country. We coast fucking coast fucking border border like like we can lock down travel almost as well as any fucking country in the world new zealand japan etc look uh, uh, look at how the island nations did for the most part right and then here's the thing that they also had contact tracing we didn't have that they had robust levels of testing we didn't have that they had early widespread mask use we didn't ever have that they had early lockdowns that people actually adhered to we never did that we had lockdowns but we never fucking locked down you have to actually fucking lock down um, yeah. We didn't have good risk communication, which basically just means, you know, actually fucking. So here's the thing 72% of Americans are scientifically literate. I will keep fucking throwing that number out there on repeat, which means most of you motherfuckers have no fucking clue what you're talking about. So you should just actually shut the fuck up when we're talking about this shit, honestly. But the reality is, since no one knows what the fuck's actually going on, you have to actually communicate this shit in a, you know, a smart way. And we didn't fucking do that because it starts with leadership, right? To yep. media, to opinion leaders, to the masses. And there was never any fucking consistent messaging because you had the president fucking co- contradicting the fucking scientists who weren't really actually communicating that shit all that well themselves to begin with, right? The media is fucking just bullshitting this whole thing left and right and fucking making it more of a political thing as opposed to actually trying to fucking communicate this shit and educate the masses, right? And it's a fucking shit show. Add in our fucking issues beforehand, right? Our hyper fucking individualistic society, our super fucking obese society. No one wants to fucking talk about that shit. 65% of our population is overweight or obese. Let's talk about that. Um, I mean, like, we can keep fucking listing shit, and it's like, we got motherfucking exposed. Straight up. Yeah. We're, dude, our we're, economic response, bad. Our public health response, fucking bad. Yeah, we're, we, we showed who we are, and most, you know, most of y'all motherfuckers out there are fucking selfish, greedy fucks that don't give a fuck about anyone about, but yourself. You don't care about your neighbor, you don't care about your fellow man, you don't care about this country. You just care that you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. And uh, and you don't want to be reminded that you're actually risking and killing other other people. So I'm catching up some of my comments because I know you're ranting right there. Robert really here says the left would bring child labor before hey, anybody. Is, is that your boy? Is that hey, is that your boy, yeah. Robert? Hey, Robert, Robert yeah. you little bitch ass! Why are you never in these fucking combos? Every time I'm here, you're supposed to be here. You never show up. I don't fuck with that. Ooh. Anyways, Ooh. I don't know what he means by the left would bring child labor. Bring, I think there's a word missing or something. People say it's only dangerous to high-risk people. people What's, say oh, it's the, uh, 
the virus is only dangerous. So what? If, so what if that's true? So what that's that's such true? an uh, so it, what what were we just talking about? How we treat our homeless, how we treat our children, how we treat our elderly. How you fucking treat and talk about and view the vulnerable of your society dictates what type of morals and values you have as a society. So that person, Correct. you're lacking in morality, buddy. Your mama didn't teach well, you well. Your daddy didn't teach you well. But that's okay. Stick around. We'll teach you well. Well, he followed. God. He's on our side, actually. He followed up with forty uh, percent of the U.S. is, is morbidly obese. So, there. I mean, you know, you're talking about this country. This country is a high risk. Everyone, almost half the country is high risk. So, one hundred percent. You know, and like, uh, you know, you know what the number one killer for law enforcement officers was last year? Fucking donuts. COVID. Oh. COVID, motherfuckers. Like, like for all the law enforcement talk. Guess what was killing <laughs> the cops? Fucking the virus. I didn't. I didn't know that actually. Um, yeah. What was the number on that? Um, I, I don't recall the exact number on it, but it was... Dude, policing is not even that dangerous. Dude, if you look at the like top 10 most dangerous fucking professions in the U.S., I'm pretty sure policing is not even top 10. But a lot of the cops were refusing to wear masks. Like, they're, you know... No, you mean a hyper-machoistic fucking culture of predominantly men didn't want to wear masks? Go fucking figure. Yeah. Shocker. Yeah. Go yeah. fucking figure. I hope Robert would follow back up with this child labor comment because I really don't know what he's trying to get at there. Let, uh, let me follow while you're waiting on Robert. Let me follow up on Bukowski. Uh, Bukowski, yeah. the Shaw was a uh, way like so the Shaw was still bad, but I mean way fucking dramatically better than what's going on right now with the Ayatollah. And so what's kind of complicated with Iran is if you go back to 1953, uh, the CIA pretty much um, undermined. Not pretty much. They did undermine. The democratic movement by Mossadegh back then, and so uh, they brought in the Shah as a puppet. And then about 25 years later, when the Shah wasn't doing what they fucking needed, they pretty much allowed the Ayatollah to come in, which totally fucked up that revolution. And now people be dying. So yeah, that's why it's like it's fucking. The U.S. has no credibility. The U.S. is full of shit. Um, they have no leg to stand on, and they've absolutely created some of that mess. But what I always try to remind people is, if you could get rid of the U.S. like influence the Middle East. The regime would still be doing the same shit they're doing. They would be targeting Saudi Arabia. They'd be targeting Israel. Um, if you got rid of Israel, they'd be fucking focused on Saudi Arabia. It does not matter. They're going to fuck with anyone who gets in their way uh, because their ideology doesn't respect borders. Um, so the West makes it really easy for them to sell their fucking message to certain people, of course. But they don't. They don't respect anything. Um, Yo, but let me their give way a of shout life. out to Think UNX real quick. Follow Think UNX. He's a fucking smart motherfucker. Um, and then Robert. He says that he wouldn't wear a mask. Now, Robert, let me ask you a fucking question. Have you ever heard of the term a, um, asymptomatic spread? Because you have the virus, you don't have any symptoms, you're fine, and you're spreading that shit to your fucking neighbors. Think about how, like, fucking just a, what a shitty thing that is to do. Like, you literally killing motherfuckers. It's like you walking around with your gun not on your not on its fucking safety, dude. Like literally, just fucking just put it on safe. Just have the safety on. Just have the fucking safety on. Literally, just have the fucking it's safety on because like... you don't fucking know. Yeah, you don't know. It, it, and... Like how would you... I I just don't understand that logic. You could... COVID been around for years. Oh my lord, you're so uninformed, dude. COVID's <laughs> not been a... COVID. Bro. COVID is a family of viruses, but COVID nineteen is the specific yeah. virus that is. So to new. his point, but you don't so understand actually, the biology yeah, no, behind it. Dude, fucking yeah. Look, no, this is good. Let's teach him right now. So the, the family of viruses has been around. We've known about it for fucking at least what four or five decades since the sixties, right? There's seven big strains that we especially know of. I think four of them are colds. The other one would be like the two from the early 2000s, H one N one, I think, or whatever. Whatever those two were. I get those ones wrong. And then I think SARS is one. And then now COVID, right? So, Correct. and here's the thing. So people conflate all that shit, right? And what's actually really cool is they found that in local populations in China that kind of are like uh, close to like bats and shit like that and some like the wildlife markets and whatnot like, whatnot like that, they found uh, when they're doing tests and stuff on their blood, a lot of them actually have um, different strains of coronavirus in their bloodstreams. It's just they don't really react like, or however it works. I don't, that's just kind of above me. But like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't like, we don't have any fucking reaction to it or whatever. But for some reason, this strain hella fucks with us. And then you got the variants and whatnot. But I want to go back to Fauci and the mask thing and the whole asymptomatic thing. That was some of the confusion early on. So when Fauci first talked about masks, he was talking about um, face. It was really more, more surgical masks and respirators at that time. 
And at that point in time, we didn't know about the asymptomatic rate. We didn't know about the asymptomatic carrier. So conventional wisdom says the people who are sick will be showing symptoms and most people know to stay home, right? So the only people who are really going to be dealing with the sick are going to be doctors and nurses, right? Because either you're going to be in the hospital really fucking sick or you'll be at home. You're not going to be in the public, right? So at that point in time, they're more concerned about shortages for those types of things for people who are going to be in the medical setting, right? But then when they learned about the asymptomatic rate and how big of a driver that was for spreading the fucking uh, the virus, they realized, holy shit, people need face coverings and whatnot to help kind of limit that spread. And that's when we started to also look at face coverings, right? Because surgical masks and respirators are different things. And that's when we looked at some of the data and realized, okay, two ply face coverings are actually way more effective, right? Things like that. And then they conflate that by saying masks don't work. That's not fucking true. Masks weren't effective in this capacity, but then because science is a process, we fucking looked at the data and learned that and we fucking adjusted. Right. But they see that as like a mission of fucking like lies or something. And it's, oh, God, it's fucking crazy. And the other, like, there's some other, like, counterintuitive things about viral spread that people don't get. One of them is that um, because most people are going to be asymptomatic and not even, not have a bad outcome, maybe not have any symptoms at all, that that means that it's not a, as deadly as the virus. And the exact opposite of that is true, actually, because when the virus impacts you strongly and quickly you're able to quickly identify that individual and isolate them from the community and that means that this they for don't example spread it ebola ebola is its own worst enemy because it's so deadly and because it acts so fast it typically takes someone down before it has time to travel host to host but because yeah. this virus hides itself so well and it actually takes so long oftentimes to actually like become like you know it is what the two to 14 day two to 15 day kind of window right and if you're asymptomatic yep. It's the perfect virus in some ways, actually. It is. It is because people, they, they just go around transmitting it. Um, you can, opening up the schools has been a fucking disaster. Um, that's one of the reasons that uh, we've got so many deaths in this country. And it's not because the kids are necessarily dying in record numbers, although they are getting sick, but they are spreading that shit. They spread it to their, whenever they travel and they show up in class and then they go home, they spread it. And that's, that's the problem. And if you look at what's happening in India right now, holy shit. Till the day I die, no one will ever make me feel any different. I well, that's a horrible attitude, Robert. Like I'm always open to being wrong about everything I fucking know. Everything that I'm saying right now, I could be goddamn wrong about. And if someone presents me with the evidence, I'm willing to change my mind and say, "You know what? I was wrong." And that is we need we need that mindset, not like this hey, local bro. like obstinance. To, like. to your point, my beliefs are up for fucking change. Every every time you take an in information, you have to evaluate that shit and fucking and it should literally change. You should be, and it's a t it's fucking crazy, right? Because you got. T I got 28 years of shit stored up here, right? But every time I take something in, it, I have to literally fucking reevaluate that and look at how it impacts everything I like, believe beforehand. If you're doing it right, but people are lazy as fuck. They don't want to do that process. They don't want to actually fucking engage the material and have to fucking think. That's why you get douchebag Roberts who are like, oh, nope, I'm always right. And I'm never going to change my mind, fucking loser. Yes, you, you know, the process is in your mind, you have a schematic for how you classify information. And I'm probably going to lose motherfuckers already, but because I use the word schematic, but um, <laughs> you either have to assimilate or accommodate, right? And so if you assimilate, that means you take in that information and you, you shove it into your existing view of the world. You don't have to change the way you view the world. And that's what you're arguing for, Robert, is you're saying that no matter what happens, no matter what information is presented, you're going to just goddamn hold on to your worldview and fucking maybe that means you ignore some of this evidence and just pretend it's not real or whatever. Um, or you have to do the little bit more uh, uh, trying and taxing uh, process of uh, um, accommodating. And that means of readjusting your worldview so that it um, accounts for the new information. And, and there's only one way that's right, um, you know, if the new information means that your scheme is wrong, your worldview is wrong, then you need to change your worldview. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're living in delusion. But that's a lot of people, so it's all good. It was me for people. a long time. Yeah. Sure, it's hard because, you know, we're all busy, we're all doing shit, and uh, life's, we're all trying to make uh, the rent next month or the mortgage payment or whatever. And um, so, yeah, so it's, sometimes it's effort. But 
you know, you would think that in a global pandemic where you had 500,000 Americans die, um, people would be more accepting of the fact that maybe uh, maybe the world view needs I got to pause you. There's only like, who knows where Robert lives, but he does. there's not 500,000 people in Robert's world. There's just whatever the fuck Robert sees, and that's that. Because that's how most people think. It's literally just they're so fucking singularly focused. What I see is the world. These people actually think the world revolves around them. Like, literally, like they didn't fucking ever have a good voice telling them that, you know, it's bigger than you. A lot motherfucking bigger than you could ever fathom, actually. Any of us could ever fathom. But that's yeah. okay. It's, Robert's got it all figured out. God bless him. It's a huge country. Um, you know, it didn't help that, uh, you know, lockdowns were... When, when they did do the, the shutdown, like it was across the board, rural communities were um, impacted the mm -hmm. same as urban areas. And, and so, you know... I know many rural communities, they, they never had the virus really even hit them. And mm -hmm. the, the odd thing about viral spread, again, is you if the virus isn't there, there's nothing to spread. And so depending, a lot of times when one place looks like it's doing a better job than another, it's not because they're, they uh, are or doing a better job. It's just that the virus hadn't made it there yet, like mm -hmm. literally. You think you know me, dude, not even close. Bro, like, I'm just going by what you're saying. Like, I'm literally <laughs> just responding to your comments. Like, you're the one that said that nothing, you would never change your mind. I mean. <laughs> That's so. what they do. They literally get so mad at that shit. They literally say words, and then when we fucking respond to their words, they're like, whoa, what the fuck? I, but here's the thing. You guys listen to Donald Trump, who continuously lies, because you guys don't think word ma words matter. They don't run out of you guys. They matter to us. Like, we utilize language for understanding. You guys utilize it to bullshit. And some of us are going to hold you accountable, motherfucker. Yeah, it's... it's society, you know, history... Or, you know, future generations are going to fucking look back at this and with disgust at yeah. what we, our behavior, how we handled this. They're, they're gonna Robert's going to go down as a Nazi. It sucks for him. For real. It's, um... It's going to be the the time America nearly fell to fucking fascism, and we have sacrificed a half a million Americans plus um, for no fucking. Two times has almost happened now, right? Because the corporations almost pulled it off uh, in the forties, nineteen forties. It was the thirties. I don't know the specific time yeah. period, but they almost they they tried. They almost considered it then, and we just almost had to happen now. And to your point, a uh, corporate state like this really only kind of splits two ways. Yeah. It's either going to go full, like, mask off fascism or a popular uprising. And, you know, they keep extending it out. They keep, and they're going to, they're going to try to do it again. But, um, I don't know. That's the, the one reason the, I feel bad for the Trumpers is they thought they were actually getting a real popular uprising. In their defense, that's what they thought they were getting. That's what they're like, that's what their rhetoric kind of like hints at. But that's not what they actually got, obviously. Um, yep. It's, uh, cause they, they want the uprising. I think everybody wants the system to change fundamentally, but... Yeah. Yeah, it's just a matter of how to go about it and what does that change look like. And... What? He, Robert's text... Oh, he, he just texted me. It popped up on the screen. Something about... <laughs> I couldn't see the whole thing, but uh, I think he called you a motherfucker. So. <laughs> I'm a motherfucker. It's all Gucci. <laughs> He said he's gonna tear you if you ask the uh, Robert. Robert, buddy. how you gonna tear me in you ass if you don't show up, son? You don't ever show up, buddy. You gotta show up first. You gotta play the game to begin with, home slice. You motherfucker. Talking shit from the sidelines, that's cute. Man in the arena, Monday homie. At Monday at eight, be there. Alright. Is that eight uh Eastern? <laughs> eight Eastern. <laughs> yeah, time All zones right. are an important thing to understand. If the revolution had a soundtrack, which song would you want to play first? Ooh, that's a good Ooh, question. That's a fucking great question. Yo, people comment with that. Yeah, I want to hear you guys' uh, thoughts on that. Yeah. Repeat the question, yeah, Mike. Repeat either. the question, everyone. If the revolution had a soundtrack, which song would you want to play first? Mm -hmm. I think it's got to be Rage Against the Machine. American Eyes. No, it's well. The No Shelter is the name of the track. It's uh, yeah, No Shelter. Let me think about this, dude. I no, I got a Trent. Dude, I got a dude, Trent Reznor song in mind, bro. Dude, I can't wait. Bring your dinner, motherfucker. Bring your fucking receipts and evidence. That's what I want to see. I am not going to tolerate making like just baseless claims. Like you claim that the election was stolen. 
bring the fucking evidence of it. You, that's the bottom line because otherwise you just stay in, you're just a guy saying shit and anyone can just say shit. I can just say whatever. I can just make up shit and claim it's true. Claim that, you know, Bill Gates is a eugenicist and COVID's really 5G and all that other fucking shit that you've heard. But he said he'll make both of us cry. Like, you won't make me cry. Like, you'll either bring receipts and evidence of the fact that uh, these claims you're making or you won't. And if you have evidence that's convincing, I'll change my mind. And if you don't, I'll be disappointed because, you know, it, it'll be a waste of time. But I'm and here's the thing. I would dude. love to learn if like we were wrong. We, dope. Teach us. Like, teach us that we're wrong because I don't want to keep saying stupid shit if I'm wrong. But you have to actually demonstrate that. You can't just bitch in the comments. <laughs> that doesn't mean shit. I know. I want to see receipts and evidence because you're talking about undermining. The oh basic... God! Ew! Change the systems in here. Fucking, fucking, God damn it, dude! We have to address the fucking elephant in the room now, everybody. And Mike, do you want to take over here? Because I feel like you. What, uh... What's the deal? I don't. Uh, what's the deal? Change the system. Cause... Bro, what was that? What was your uh, video earlier on um, that food? That food we don't. That food we don't name. Mm -hmm. You're talking about Brussels sprouts. You know exactly. Yep. But, oh, Mother she's fucking in? Brussels sprouts. She's fucking in here, bro. Mother fucking Brussels sprouts. Someone, someone, if she said one pro Brussels sprouts, I swear, I swear I'm recording her. TikTok's not talking. Dude, it's but like a, what, dude, it's like that super, that's that super trooper shit, part. bro. Robert, that's super it's shit not talking down the motherfucker. <laughs> Robert, I'm gonna lose my fucking patience with you, motherfucker. <laughs> Bring the fucking evidence. That's it. I don't want to hear any fucking whining or bitching about people talking down to someone or none of that shit. Fuck all of that shit, dude. Fuck the fucking politics of it. Fuck the fucking hurt feelings. I don't care if you're a snowflake and got your feelings hurt. I want the fucking receipts and evidence for the bullshit claims that you keep making. That's it. If you ain't got oh, the God. fucking evidence, there's it, two fucking of them. Stop. Carnage, I thought we had something special. You were one of my favorites. And I'm going to have to... I'm not going to say reconsider, but I have to th think about some shit. Bro, there's more Brussels sprouts bullshit happening over here. Fortunate God. Son is the song. That's a good That's a good one. Fortunate Son. Oh! The Day the World Went Away. Nine Inch Nails. Boom. Mm. That's not bad. Just there's the beginning gets me going. Yeah. What else are we get in here? Someone said It ain't me, it ain't me. He's singing the lyrics to Fortunate so. <laughs> Uh Someone's when right Trump now. left the White House on his helicopter ride on Biden's inauguration day, uh they were he was playing Fortunate Son. And the irony of that I oh, just geez. could not get past. Bro. Dude, when the Trumpers play like they're fucking like they were like doing their shit like rage against the machine and stuff like that, I'm like, Are you are you fucking kidding me? It's or some yeah, system of down I mean, shit sometimes or something. It's like are you are you real? Are you like do you really like? It hurts. It like I have a physical yeah. reaction. It physically hurts. I'm not even kidding. Like it's like right in here. It hurts. Yeah, yeah. Robert's still me messaging me on private. Robert, I can't see your text messages. In this flash. <laughs> just, just bring the receipts. Bring the evidence. That's it. That's all I can say. Because. It's still oh, help. Let, let me help it's Sabs fun. out here. So Sabs, um, Brussels sprouts are the nastiest fucking food on the planet. Like, full stop. Yeah. And it appears there's some sick people out there who are waging a war against me and Mike and trying to promote the message that Brussels sprouts are somehow good, healthy, or tasty. Which is complete fucking shenanigans. To be Anyone uh, that says they like Brussels sprouts is fucking lying. Okay? <laughs> you know that that shit tastes bad. You know it's no good. You know that it's horrible, nasty shit, and you try to you lie to yourself, and then you try to convince yourself that you oh you got a secret recipe. Maybe if you cover it with a bunch of bacon and stuff, that it tastes good. Which means right? bacon no, tastes good. Bacon, bacon tastes good. Yeah, it's exactly. Right. Bacon tastes exactly. Good. You if you gotta put good tasting shit on good. bad shit, it's not the it. That's exactly you're eight hundred percent. So here's the thing: if there's any of you sick fucks who eat that shit raw, and I think she actually does, so whatever, like. I'll concede that. You're sick. You actually enjoy the taste of them. Whatever. But to you fuckers, like, put a hell of shit over that. Just eat that shit. No, I don't yeah, like they... cabbage. Do you like cabbage? I, I'll <laughs> tolerate cabbage if it's corned beef and cabbage because the corned beef is so good. I'll fucking, like... 
Yo, you know, if if Trump if Trump stood with me against the Brussels sprouts, I'd stand with him. Sometimes you have ugly bedfellows. You got to look at the bigger picture here. Yeah, I mean, it's all about. I'm not an ideologue like uh, politically. <laughs> if uh, if he can move the needle for UBI or or banning Brussels sprouts, I'll support him in that area. I'll fight him on all the others. Um, but gotta do, gotta I do sometimes. Salt and pepper. I don't want a lot of seasoning. That's the Japanese in me, though. Hey. Um, <laughs> You know, Brussels sprouts are not just baby cabbages. That's a lie. You've been listening to the fucking Brussels sprout propagandist. Stop Don't it. Don't listen to Big Brussels. Fuck them, dude. They're in your head. Brussels sprouts are evil. Like, I would eat Brussels sprouts if he denounced them. Never stand with orange man. Oh, wow. <laughs> that This this one's, uh, yeah, he's saying that he would go he would eat the Brussels sprouts if uh, it was the opposite here, side of Trump. I want to point something out. Here's the fucking problem with Trumpers. This is this is what they do. They think they're so big, bad, and tough. But the second they get pushed back, they throw a fucking fit. They literally throw a fucking fit. It's it's and it's and here's the word for it. It's pathetic. It's literally pathetic. Because here's the thing. I grew up a conservative. I grew up with the whole facts over feelings thing, and I actually believe that. All right. Yeah. Kale's nasty. Keep listening to that nasty shit. I eat bacon burgers. Uh. I do like some salads, yeah, you know, I like wings. I like wings. Um, I like top ramen yeah. with barbecue sauce. There's some good kick-ass ramen now. Mm -hmm. Some good Japanese like ramen, like can, that's off the chain. I'm gonna say oh. this, but I kind of like lefty. You speak your mind, but you're wrong. Bukowski. Then prove, then show where I'm wrong, Robert. I appreciate you. I like you though. I like. See, don't get it twisted, anyone. I like my man Robert. He's fucking funny as fuck, but he's fucking believing stuff without evidence, and that's the problem. That's where I got the beef with him on, and I got the beef with oh. anyone that has these strong beliefs with that's not based on anything. An olive branch, Robert. I thought. See, they showed me a couple of your videos. Your shit video was actually pretty funny. I'll give you credit on that. I got a chuckle out of it. Same. Yeah, with the underwear one, with the yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. He, he makes me laugh, man. I like this fucker, but he's fucking wrong, and he's not got the receipts, and he knows it. That's why he's, that's why he's getting upset, and he's. Well, uh, and here's where they get mad too. They, they, I don't think they understand how media works. Like they think that we get our story from like, the Atlantic, for example. But no, I'm not really getting it from the Atlantic. I'm going to their embedded links, which is typically research. Right, typically data, peer-reviewed work that's relevant to the topic from the actual fucking experts involved, right? The people de dedicating years, often decades, to this shit, right? And I look at their abstract, I look at their methodology, I look at their conclusion, I look at the relevant literature, I look if they've been like you know cited, sourced, things like that. I follow up and I look at the data, all this shit, right? And that takes fucking time. That takes a lot more time than reading a headline or looking at a meme that confirms what you think. It requires actually looking at the fucking evidence and then seeing how that fucking relates back to your experience which are two different things right because our experience is very limited right and these things are at the population level and it requires humility to understand that these are not the same things right my experience is That's just right. one little piece of data amongst the whole fucking range of data that's the that's the the odd thing about like numbers and and aggregate experiences is the, Later, like, the economy could be doing great nationally as a whole as, as a country, but someone could still be having a very shitty like undeserved outcome, and there that doesn't diminish their personal experience at all. Like, um, but you know we do have to look at numbers now. Robert's over here saying that uh, he's just saying that there's more to it than we see. And well, and this, and 100%. It, we, this is all, yeah. There's more I, to I it than we all see. Yeah. I, yeah, like, uh, we know that. But, but the thing is, is that you have to actually have evidence of, like, if you're going to believe some non, something that's different than the evidence that we have, then what show us that evidence? Because you go on the base, the best evidence that you have. And that's what you don't have. Now, Kipper Double D joined. Everyone go follow Kipper Double D. He's the fucking man. Uh, he's he's always making some good takes and shit. And, um, yeah. Tim, we are kind of talking about COVID, kind of talking about Trumpers, kind of talking about uh, anecdotal evidence versus, you know, population-level data and shit like that. Yes. Um, humility. Adam, Adam, Robert does actually believe the election was stolen. That's what he believes. 
And no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't actually. He doesn't. No, Robert doesn't believe that. Actually, he doesn't believe that. You don't think so? No, because if he's not, if he's up and if he's such a big baddie, why would you submit to a stolen election? That's bitch made. So he doesn't believe it. Obviously, he just says it to make himself feel better. Because if he believed it, he'd be up and trying to, you know, resist against the tyranny those who stole his election. So he doesn't believe it. Because if someone stole my election, I'd burn them down. Now, I have a theory about Robert. I have a theory that Robert may not actually be a true, like, hardcore MAGA because I've seen him wearing a lot of tie-dyed colored clothing. I have a theory that he might actually be a deadhead that has <laughs> done a lot of acid on Call of the Great the Dead around the country. But he's denied it so far. Um, you know, we'll see. Six, the jury 70, 65 to 70 percent of them think the election was stolen. That's, like, fucking ludicrous. Like literally, they're fucking insane. That's 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 where I have a hard time because it's like, that's literally just living in a fake world, and and it's a belief that if you actually fucking believe, you should act upon. That's not something you get to just say. You should act upon that. And if you don't act upon that, you are a coward. You're a coward either way. There's no way out of it because either you're a coward for accepting a lie to make yourself feel better, or you're a coward for not acting upon the truth that you believe. So which one is it, Robert? Are you a coward for accepting a lie, or are you a coward for not fucking acting upon your belief? Either way, you're a coward, my man. Hard words. Tough words. Hard words, but true words. Kipper Double, Kipper Double D comes in with the DNC stole the primaries. What up, young boy? You know. Yeah, they kind of. They did. They, they they put their fucking thumb on the scale. That's for sure. They uh they they like to. Politics is a dirty business, man. There's there's a lot of that shit going on, but there's a difference between. You know, and it's not a big, I don't even want to make this argument, so a fuck the DNC for uh, putting their thumb on the scale. Um, but widespread, multi, multiple millions of fraudulent votes being cast is fucking, that, like, that's, uh, that's a crime what's, that gets uh, severely what's Robert's favorite? What's Robert's favorite source? Like, if does he have a source or something he goes to for information? That's a good question. I would love to know the answer to that. Robert, uh, speak up, man. Where do you get your information from? And, uh, young boy, we're kind of talking about... Well, we got a, a dude who Mike's cool with on his side who kind of keeps commenting. We're kind of responding to some of his comments. Yeah. And it's typically about COVID, evidence, Trump, elections, you know, the usual bullshit. Uh, because Robert's on Cindy, you can only see my comments. You can't see uh, Michael's um, people's comments. Robert gets his information from his wife. That's why I'm never getting married. I, you might wanna, might wanna, uh, you know, I'm not gonna say nothing on that one. Um, there's a, there's a tendency, I have a lot, I, I got my, um, my mother, uh, she'll come and say some, something ridiculous every now and then, and I go, where'd you hear that from? And she's like, the John, who lives down the street, told me. And I'm like, John oh, ain't a fucking credible source. <laughs> John ain't, we'll find out Monday. Okay. All right. I'm anxiously awaiting the evidence. Oh, in all seriousness, um... I talk hard, but like it's a serious thing, Robert. If you're gonna say an election is stolen, dude, like what's like think about it. An election is stolen is an act of force. That's a little act against our republic, against the democratic nation. It signals that our path of negotiation that's supposed to lead to peaceful ends is gone. And all you have left is to fight in some capacity. So what it means is you think we're fighting, but you're not actually fucking willing to fight. That's why you're a coward, because you're really pushing a narrative that, that signals for a fight, but you're not fighting yourself. And that's bullshit. That's why I get mad, man. That's why I come at you guys so hard. If if you're a Trumper who doesn't think the election was stolen, I can live with that shit. But I don't fuck with election stealer motherfuckers. That's hard bullshit. And it's on site. You think that shit? Then fight me because I stole your election, motherfucker. That's what I say. Like, Fine. I stole your election. Act on it, bitch. It doesn't even... like you could, Anyone that makes a fucking claim that's absurd or, or, or just over it's the wrong. top... You have it's just to, wrong, dude. You have to fucking have evidence. Kitty says you're going to radicalize them further, right? You know, I don't think that's... I, I think that um, 
I, I don't know that Robert's ever going to change. He already he stated himself that nothing will ever change his mind. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, here's we'll the thing: see. that's the cold. That's the cold hard logic. There's no. There's nothing attached to that. That's, that's really just the belief and the logic. That's connecting belief to action. That's all it is. It's a skill set that you have to have. You're like we don't. Too many people don't have it. Is if you have a belief, what is that belief based on? Is it based on feelings or just rumors shit that you've been told that uh, you don't have any any information on, or, or fucking empirical evidence? If you don't know the difference between anecdotal and empirical, like quantifiable evidence, then that's you're, you're susceptible to bullshit. Um, mm-hmm. Biden That's, is socialism, that goes back. bro. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Biden is socialism. Okay. Let me explain this to you, okay? Biden is a fucking conservative. He's a Republican, practically. For reals. Biden is a, almost a goddamn Republican. Secondly, you're confusing, like, socialist with, uh, so, with the advocating for social services. And... Social services are all around you. They're the fucking police department. They're the roads, the infrastructure, the fucking airports, the goddamn public education system that you've taken advantage of that your kids have gone to. You know, that's the that's all things that we've decided to do as a society. Those are social services. Yeah, I'd push back a tad artist. bit, Adam. Probably I would agree a tad bit. bit. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. I could accept that if that's like if that's yeah. like what you want to think. I, I'm not going to push back too hard on that one. Most politicians at that level could be labeled a con artist in some sense if you want to play with the word. Um, sure. But then what the hell is Donald Trump? I would ask. Um, but anyways, yeah. to your point, Adam, I would say I don't know, especially given how his administration is looking so far. I wouldn't call Biden a Republican anymore. Um, but I mean, for the most part of his career, if you look at like the last 40 years, what he's been is a, you know, fucking pretty neutral man, pretty in the middle, like a moderate Democrat, like a very yeah slight left like left democrat i mean like he's not he's this he's the status quo you know um he's been in the middle of he's been in the middle of it um for a long time so that's why it's so it's kind of funny it goes back to one of the things that gets really annoying it's like how can we both be simultaneously fascist and communist to you people those are diametrically opposed fucking ideologies they're literally they're literally inherently against one another that's why you guys. That's why I don't take anything they say so seriously. Because like you can't actually believe what you just said. Because because if you understand what the things are, you can't. Those can't both be true. So it's like you guys aren't talking to talk. You're just looking to throw insults, which is fine, but don't expect it, us to like take it seriously. You know, because it's just it doesn't mean anything. It's like the whole like how can I, how could Joe Biden be sleepy Joe, but he's gonna be like bring communism? Do you know how fucking hard we're working to actually bring communism? Do you know how hard we're working on that? And we can't get it done. We've been trying for decades. You think you think sleepy Joe's the one to do it? It's that's another contradiction. It's the point. There's just so many contradictions in thought. It's 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 insane. That's the word. Straight jacket fashion. Good song by Chevelle. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I mean, both political parties have faults. I mean, they're both mm -hmm. guilty of, of bullshit, for sure. Like, but to the point, uh, I right now, when I look out, especially after last year, at both parties and what they're advocating for, I don't see the Republican Party pushing for anything that directly helps people at all. Everything is helping the rich and the fucking corporations. That's it. And I see the left is at least trying to advocate for fucking helping people. Um, not Now, you could argue they're not being effective. You could argue that they've got some uh, bad seeds in the party that are maybe not uh, doing a good job at that. And maybe some old leadership that needs to get the fuck out of the way. But, you know, there's at least people on that side that are fighting for normal people. And I don't see that at all. But I don't think the DNC. I don't think the actual DNC is doing that. I think there's people who Not are Democrats DNC. that are doing that. But that's but that's but who yeah. but who controls your primary process? Who controls so much your yeah. funding? Oh, yeah. Who DNC controls so much your narrative and your messaging? Man. I would love to see more transparency out of that argument. I want to know how they make the decisions they make. And that's that's what I would love to see. Ah, dude, so here's something, Robert. I think the DNC is a bigger problem for me personally. You're gonna, you probably won't get what I'm saying here, but for me personally, the DNC is a bigger problem than the GOP because I know what the GOP is. It's a known entity. I know what they do. I know how they operate. I know what they're gonna do. They're not gonna. They, they operate the same fucking way. 
and the DNC is supposed to be my avenue to combat that. But the DNC doesn't represent me because the DNC was more interested in maintaining their position than beating Donald Trump, right? Because the DNC is like, Donald Trump's this unique existential threat to the American experience. But when push came to shove, they were more willing to lose to him than promote a Bernie Sanders or an Andrew Yang which means they don't actually give a fuck about the very things they complain about, which means I don't fuck with them either because the DNC is just like you guys, right? If you're going to call someone a fascist, but then you're not going to do everything to beat him, well, your words don't mean shit. So, Robert, if it makes you feel better, I think the DNC is just like you. Robert says that uh, he thinks we know, as Americans, know less about our government than any other country. I mean, yeah, I think that's probably yeah. right. That's, you know, that's, that's probably fair, that's actually. Right. Yeah, that's probably fair. Point. Yeah. Um, Especially because, like, think about Kipper Double D comes in with DNC represents the big money donors. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, to that point, Adam. Obviously, like, there's still levels. I'm not gonna fucking not vote for most Democrats at this point. I mean, the first time I voted for a Democrat in my life, by the way, was Joe Biden. Beyond some, because like, dude, I'm in California, so uh, I was a Republican until what 2019 was when I registered. But I, my conservative views dropped off around 2016. Donald Trump pushed me. Uh, away. So you can thank Donald Trump. He pushed a lot of us away from uh, the party and whatnot like that. And then once you get pushed away from that, you start to open up to other, you know, sources of media. You start to open up to other um, just experiences. You just learn more and you just... And the thing was, it wasn't like... It wasn't that left media changed me. It just was seeing this media and this media and actually having the whole fucking thing to look at and to be able to decide for myself as opposed to just having access to only one fucking line of thought. I had I had opened up to it and it changed. How I saw things. Um, I got I got in the habit of just doing like deep dives on like the the source data, right? So it was with Andrew Yang's campaign. That's when I got started with it. It was like, okay, this UBI bullshit. Like I laughed at that shit at first, but I had to go read some fucking economic studies and read from an economist. And I don't have a degree in a, in, in uh, economics, but. I said, I'm going to go do the work. So I'd have to read the fucking shit multiple times and, and ask questions and understand it. And then it carried over. So now I do the same thing when it came to COVID. I fucking, I wasn't reading the fucking, watching CNN, like, and like it's thrown out there all the time. I was reading from fucking epidemiologists, the, the mm -hmm. world's best epidemiologists in the fucking world. And uh, they were saying one thing and the president and certain media outlets and other politicians are fucking lying. So to Cindy's Ooh. point in my comment section, the Daily Wire, right? Um, uh, whatever the which ones, Ben Shapiro's, like all those, like all those sites and shit, like Town Hall, etc. They're not linking to that shit. They're not supporting their views with that data, with that research that you can go follow up on. So to her point, it's a coordinated fucking attack against expertise, right? Against mm -hmm. knowledge, against intellectualism, right? Against specialists. So. But, Cindy, the way to combat that is we have to flood, uh, we have to win the battle of social media. And I think we're losing that battle right now. Yeah, yeah, we're losing big time. Um, yeah. That's that's the ground zero of the fight, in my opinion, is winning the battle of social media. We have to meme better, we have to message better, we have to brand better, we have to mobilize better, we have to mass coordinate online better. Um, but we're, we're too yeah. disorganized. We, there's too much infighting on the left. The conservatives get to here's the thing man you don't have to like the conservatives when push comes to shove them motherfuckers get in line and support each other they know what matters they know what it matters to fucking vote to get judges in place to fucking win a local races to win state races things like that we're just busy fucking bickering about taglines and shit so yeah we're in the age of murdoch that's that's right if you're double d and he, he brought up something else. The Republicans have been pretty anti-science i think that that's because the their ties with the evangelical like i you know uh, I, I'm prepared to catch the shit for this, but again, I'll say it again. I I really think religion is a huge problem in this country because of the the denial of science that aspect that that brings. Um, what up, Octo Diver? Um, so, this is one me and Mike. Probably, I think the most we've disagreed on a topic. Probably is this it? Probably. I um, so. I mean, it's not even, it's not even like we fully disagree, really. Um, I don't see religion as an inherently bad thing. I see it as a really problematic thing, how it's been like applied and used in most uh, societies and cultures. Um, but I think religion have taken through a prescriptive lens, right? How you operate within this world and not as a descriptive lens, right? How the world is. I think that's okay because science is the descriptor, right? Um, 
And these are two separate things. And I think too often people like to conflate them or try and make them the same thing or act like they're competing things when they're, I think they're trying to do literally different fucking things. Um, and if you take this one into this realm, you're going to have problems. So, yeah, it's, if you view, if you view the religious texts as, an, um, you know, a guide, a story, uh, parallels to, to learn lessons from, I got no problem with you. You know, mm -hmm. if you, um, are spiritual like i got no problem with spirituality in general like uh it's the it's the people that um believe in the fucking uh you know the, the scripture is the word of god uh you know the earth was made in seven days bullshit like please, please. yeah i got, 100%. I got that time for that shit by the way i think i'm gonna call it in about seven minutes here for now at least we have transition back inside because computer's getting low. We Sounds could, good. On that note, take a break and come back later. Just call it for a night, you think? Yeah, we'll see how we feel. But yeah, this is a good session. Thanks for everyone yeah. for fucking hopping on. And, uh, you know, we'll uh, see Robert tomorrow night. He's going to bring the goddamn actually, evidence. Yo, yo, actually, on that note, how can people who are here, if you're interested in following up on that, how can we get them in on that? Yeah, so follow us. Um, uh, follow massive collective action is an account on TikTok that is uh we're sort of using to help aggregate content and, and coordinate a more um at working uh collectively and co-promoting each other um so follow that account follow my account sure. you know i'm uh resist for community mute the media we got um Giant check them out on Twitter too, by the way. Check uh yeah, check out Massive Collective Action on Twitter. Check out Resist for Humanity on Twitter. He's really active there too. I suck about that. I might just give him my Twitter handle, honestly. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I think yeah, I think you post the live streams there too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. TikTok. Well, there's my uh, Resist for Humanities there on that. Yeah, we do the live streams on Facebook. They go out to Twitter. It goes out to Facebook. It goes out to YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. Yep. And cool. shout out to Crowdsource UBI. I'm going to give a shout out to this project that people need to get behind. I'm just going to give you a teaser. We can't get, if we can't get the government to do UBI, we can do Crowdsource UBI. And if you think that's not possible, think about that kid that had the uh, the Holiday Inn Express worker uh, that um, had that bad experience that we all saw the video for. And his GoFundMe was, uh, I think it blew past 100K. So we can uh it's, it's worth uh pursuing um kipper double d's gotta go have breakfast interesting interesting and uh, it's in my I'm chat right there guys too. so shy uh cheyenne for ubi just put it down there crowdfund basic uh income at crowdfund ubi um she's awesome by the way that she she's uh brilliant she bounces me out Kipper, well when we have conversations so i might be resist the number four humanity on twitter i think i couldn't get the the name the characters all fit so it might be resist the number four humanity on twitter there but um, yeah. yeah anyways i think and, we're going to try and do this more regularly and a little more consistently a little more structured and organized but this is kind of a dive in and let's do it so and, and if anyone everyone. wants to hop on with us too at some point yeah. like anyone that wants to like we do these live streams all the time and shit we'd love to have you on and like actually chat because we think that's the answer is uh getting more people out there talking and shit and if you don't want to do that then just like follow share all that stupid shit you know what's up Thanks and we don't always out. go live either. Sometimes it's just background chats, so jump in. Yeah. Later, guys. See ya.